Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. The S&P 500 is testing its 200 week moving average here for the first time since COVID before that 2018, before that 2015. Now let's zoom out here uh, to 1982 and we can spot that there's only been four crosses, four crosses over the last 40 years one being in 1982 when the market fell below the 200 week moving average one in 2001 and 2008 of course and briefly here it closed during covid below the 200 week moving average so that does count as a close below the 200 week moving average it's no wonder this is known as the secular bull run moving average it's really where the market is at a turning point in a lot of these instances it was a beautiful time to be buying the dip, to be entering the market at attractive valuations, at a discounted price. And yet in 2008, it was a very bad moment to be positioning aggressively on the market. If we compare the number of bounces off this 200 week moving average, here's one in 1987, a second one in 1990. We have one in 2011, where the market never closed below the 200. We had a fourth one in 2015 and one in 2018. So that's five near perfect bounces off the 200 week moving average against four crosses below it. Two of them being very brief, two of them being pretty catastrophic for anybody who was in the market at that time. Now the question is, are we about to see a larger market drop through that 200 week moving average and potentially retracing a large part of the moves that we've seen throughout the past few years? It wouldn't be the first time that the market moves back and retraces a large portion of a move made over the last few years. By the way, before I go any further in this video, I want to make sure that uh, everyone's aware that we are currently doing a discount on the service at gameoftrades.net. It's the two year anniversary of our service. You guys have enabled us to do some great things uh, when it comes to contributing to the investment community in terms of adding uh, to the public debate on the financial markets. It has been such a privilege and hopefully this is only just the beginning. So for this special day, we are doing a 20% discount on the service to really give access to as many people as possible. So if you've wanted to check out the service for some time and you were waiting for a special deal, uh, well, here it is. There's a discount code uh, in the link down below that you can use when purchasing your membership. So across below the 200 week moving average right now would mark the end of a secular bull run. A bull run that we've had since 2009 right here and has really led to some incredible gains. So is this really going to be the end of it? Is this uh, the top that we saw back at the very beginning of this year? This was the end of a 13 year rally. We're going to be talking about that in this video. We talk about that multiple times a week. If you wish to follow these crazy markets with us, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And of course, if you enjoy this episode, don't forget to smash that like button as hard as you can. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So more specifically, the topic we're going to be addressing today is the dollar, right? The dollar has been rising very aggressively here ever since this bottom uh, in May of 2021. If we jump to a monthly chart and we put up the RSI to see what kind of momentum we have on the dollar right now, you can see the RSI has not been this overbought since 2015. And before that, the only which was right here. And before that, that 1985 right here after a four year period a five year period where the dollar just went on an absolutely crazy run here this was during paul volcker's era and so a lot of people right now are saying hey the dollar is rising here because the fed is battling inflation right if we add uh, inflation on top of this chart you can see inflation hasn't been this high since 1981 right and so the argument here is you know, this is just the beginning of the dollar's rise because the Fed needs to bring down inflation just like it needed to bring down inflation throughout this period. Now, why do we care about that? Why, why is that important? Why is a strong dollar actually such a bad thing for the S&P 500? Because a dollar is bad for earning. Let me put up the S&P 500. First of all, you can see just very quickly periods where the dollar rises are typically moments where the S&P 500 doesn't perform too well. And you can see here again in 2018, S&P doesn't perform too well. And of course, 2022 right here, 
here, a very aggressive rise in the dollar. S&P is down. To us, the best way to explain that is through this chart here. This is a chart of the dollar, the inverse of the dollar against earnings, S&P 500 earnings, which are a massive driving force of the S&P 500. And you can see they trade together. They have a beautiful correlation right here, meaning that the dollar is a big headwind to earnings. So a lot of people right now are saying, okay, we've seen this rise in the dollar more recently. And so brace yourself because Q4 earnings are going to be absolutely catastrophic. Just very quickly, why does that happen? And we've discussed this a couple of times before, because when the dollar is strong, it means multinational companies that have revenue from other countries, from abroad in other currencies, that revenue that's coming from abroad is counted in dollars. And so those revenues that are coming from other currencies look a lot smaller. And so that's just a mechanical headwind for earnings to see these global currencies become weaker relative to the dollar and earnings are calculated in dollars. So that's kind of the dynamic there. And that's a big, big argument out there that says, okay, hey guys, this first part of the drop in the market has been due to the Fed, it's been due to inflation, it's been due to rising rates. And so valuations have come down. And so this next part here uh, throughout the rest of 2022 and 2023, this next part is going to be about earning because the dollar has been so strong. And so that's going to be a big headwind to earnings. Let's try and understand that. And also let's try and completely tear that theory apart. But before I do so, make sure to smash that like button as hard as you can. These videos that go a little bit more in depth uh, into the mechanics, a little bit more in depth into the things that actually drive the market, they're often not pushed out by YouTube. And I think that's unfortunate because I think it's a net positive that people are aware of these forces that are playing in the market. So if you want to help these videos get pushed out uh, to more people, make sure to smash that like button as hard as you can. The reason that we don't think the dollar is going to have a devastating impact on earnings, or at least an unexpected devastating impact on earnings is because this relationship is well known. It's a known known. It's predictable. It's accountable for you can't really have an investment strategy uh, where you say, Oh, the dollar has been up recently. And so earnings are going to deteriorate. And so the market is going to go lower. That is not how the market works, because all of this is mechanical, and you can model it or at least include this factor into a model for earnings. And that's why a lot of the work that we're doing uh, right now at gameoftrades.net is modeling the impacts of various economic developments on earnings growth. The dollar you can see right here has around four months lag before it hits earning, right? And so we can take that into account when building this kind of model. So if we're doing it for individual investors, for our clients at Game of Trades, then you can bet yourself that Wall Street is doing it on a mass scale for their multi-billion dollar clients. So any of the strength that you're seeing on the dollar is already accounted for in terms of how it's going to impact earnings. And that's why the dollar here has been a headwind to the S&P 500. But if it turns around here, then it's going to be a tailwind to the S&P 500. To me, that's our mission at Game of Trades. There's an unfair advantage uh, for institutions who have the capacity to do that kind of immediate discounting of uh, macro influences. And of course, that's only accessible to massive portfolios. So that's really what we're trying to do is bring this research to you guys and, and actually display it in a way that you can use it, right? A model portfolio, price targets, buy sell ratings. It's one thing to have very complicated research. It's another thing to actually be able to use it. So that is really uh, the customer experience that we're trying to focus on. So okay, that's very nice. The dollar has been discounted. You didn't really learn much from now about the future. I'm just telling you, you know, this is already discounted by the market in terms of the dollar's impact on earnings. What if it continues rising? As we discussed at the beginning of the video, what happens if we are indeed in this type of period that would continue to be a major, major headwind to the S&P 500. If you see that this kind of three, four year period where the dollar is rising, imagine the devastating impact that would have on the market. And it would be worse than in 1982, because right now a big part of the S&P are multinational companies. And so they are a lot more vulnerable to a stronger dollar. 
The world is a lot more globalized now than it was in 1982. So a strong dollar, probably, and we haven't actually done the work on this before, but that would be very interesting. But if I were to bet, I think today's market is a lot more sensitive to a strong dollar than it was back in 1982. Now I've got one chart that I wanna use to completely tear apart the idea that the Fed is going to need to be as aggressive as it was back in 1982 which was essentially a five year period where the Fed was incredibly aggressive in terms of the tightening of monetary policy in order to bring down inflation. What's different today to 1980? And the big, big answer is inflation expectations. Look where they were back in 1980 here. Uh, they were at around 10%. So the bond market back in 1980 was expecting 10% year-on-year inflation over the next 10 years. Just think about that for a moment, how unanchored inflation expectations were back in 1980. That is absolutely monstrous. And so Paul Volcker, the chair of the Fed back in 1980, he not only had to crush inflation, but he had to crush inflation expectations. So he had to keep on raising rates very aggressively for a very long period of time in order to finally maybe get those inflation expectations moving lower. And look at where we are now in 2022. We're at 2%, right? There's no inflation expectations right now. We had an inflation shock, right? And the Fed is being very aggressive in order to not risk this type of rise in inflationary expectations. But the truth is, the Fed doesn't have to get nearly as aggressive for nearly as long as it did back in this period. So 1981 to 1982, this type of scenario for the dollar, that doesn't look uh, incredibly plausible. Now you could see bankruptcies from countries around the world and complete collapses of other currencies. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you haven't already and that like button if you enjoyed, if you learned something new and found this video useful. Now in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.